Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having a fantastic day today. We're back at it again with some more Pathfinder. This time, I want to do an Aeroshell build. She's someone whose personality I like a lot. I've been enjoying what I've been able to see of her romance. And as you'll see, she's very effective in combat as well. Now, I'm going to choose a tiefling photo. She is not actually a tiefling. She's a succubus. But there is no succubus race option, either in the photos or in the character creator. So we'll get it as close as we possibly can. She is an espionage expert. These rangers' favorite hunting grounds aren't woods or mountains, but city streets and enemy headquarters. These masterful spies hunt for secrets rather than meat, using lies and stealthiness as effectively as blades and arrows. All right, so we'll go ahead and choose Tiefling, and we'll pick Grimspawn just to hope get our stats as close as we possibly can. Okay, so we cannot directly mirror her stats, but just to let you know, her stats are 13 on Strength, 22 on Dexterity, 16 on Constitution, 18 in intelligence, 14 in wisdom, and 21 on charisma. So, as you can see, she has some monster stats. All right, if we go next, you can see she has class skills in trickery, stealth, knowledge arcana, knowledge world, perception, and persuasion. Having perception on a teammate is always good. There will be times where even a character with a high perception will fail a check. And then it'll just go through the rest of the team and check their perception as well. So whenever possible, you want to go ahead and just throw perception onto a character. And I'd also highly recommend you level her in stealth. She gets a bonus later on based upon her uh, level and into stealth. So it's definitely worth having her specialize in that. The rest you could choose however you like. Okay, for her feet, she gets point blank shot. And her background is Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunters add stealth to the list of her class skills. She also becomes proficient with light armor clubs, light maces, and heavy maces. She has a favorite enemy of humans. At first level, a ranger selects a creature type from the ranger favored enemies list. He gets a plus two bonus on weapon attack and damage rolls against them. At fifth level and every five levels thereafter, the ranger may select an additional favorite enemy. In addition, at each such interval, the bonus against any one favorite enemy, including the one just selected is so desired, increases by two. All right, I believe she's chaotic good. Let's get that. She is reserved. Oh, Rochelle. Next. All right, anything I need? She has trap finding. An espionage expert gets a bonus equal to half her level on perception checks. I forgot about that. So she gets an increase on perception and stealth. So I said anyway, though, having perception on a character is absolutely fantastic. All right, I think that's the only thing I need to explain there. Oh, frigid touch. Your melee touch attack deals 46 points of cold damage and calls the target to be staggered for one round. If the attack is a critical hit, the target is staggered for one minute instead. You'll probably never use that. All right. And she gets up to level 10 before you meet her. Archery, precise shot. You can shoot or throw ranged weapons at an opponent engaged in melee without taking the standard negative four penalty on your attack roll. All right, and then for feats, rapid shot. When making a full attack with a ranged weapon, you can fire one additional time this round at your highest bonus. All of your attack rolls take a negative two penalty when using rapid shot. Undercover, an espionage expert gives a bonus equal to half her level on persuasion when used to bluff and stealth checks. I prefer to have persuasion on my main character, so I usually don't give that to party members, but huh, you, your mileage may vary. We'll go ahead and throw it in dexterity. Okay. Ex espionage expert magic. When usually, while usually rangers use their wisdom to cast divine spells, espionage experts use the power of their personality. The main casting ability for the espionage expert is charisma. 
A ranger forms a bond with his companions. This bond allows him to spend a move action to grant half his favorite enemy bonus against a single target of the appropriate type to all allies within 30 feet who can see or hear him. This bonus lasts for a number of rounds equal to the ranger's wisdom modifier, minimum one. All right, and Deadly Aim. You can choose to take a negative one penalty on all ranged attack rolls to get a plus two bonus on all ranged damage rolls. When your base attack bonus reaches plus four and every plus four thereafter, the penalty increases by negative one and the bonus to damage increases by plus two. All right, and she also gets favorite enemy outsiders. And then at level 7, she gets clustered shots. You take a moment to carefully aim your shots, causing them to all to, all to strike nearly the same spot. When you use a full attack to make multiple ranged weapon attacks against the same opponent, total the damage from all hits before applying that opponent's damage reduction. Also, I don't think I explained mini shot. When making a full attack with a bow, your first attack fires two arrows. If the attack hits, both arrows hit. Apply precision-based damage such as sneak attack and critical hit damage only once for this attack. Damage bonuses from using a composite bow with a high strength bonus apply to each arrow, as do other damage bonuses such as a ranger's favorite enemy bonus. Damage reduction and resistances apply separately to each arrow. Level up your skills. Okay. And now improve critical. Longbow. Evasion. A character can avoid even magical and unusual attacks with great agility. If a character makes a successful reflex saving throw against an attack that normally deals half damage on a successful save, he instead takes no damage. A helpless character does not gain the benefit of evasion. Fill out the skills, archery, point blank master. She specializes in the longbow, clearly. And for our next favorite enemy, she gets monstrous humans. One note, when I look at her character sheet, I can't tell which bonus she's been choosing for, for, the, for the choices beyond the first. So I know she has chosen outsiders, monsters, humanoids, and humans, but I'm not sure which order she's been choosing or which one has been getting that additional bonus. But I will tell you for any that you are able to choose, I would recommend going with outsiders. Uh, demons and other special characters are under that particular category and they are definitely numerous in the game. Oh, and Point blank master, uh, choose one type of ranged weapon. You do not provoke attacks of opportunity when firing the selected weapon while threatened. Okay, so now we're at the level 11 feats and you're able to start making your own decisions about how you want to level up. A couple of notes before we do that. There are three feats she has that are missing from this build. One, she does have brew potions, but there is no way in the character creator for me to add that to her in just 10 levels. But when you get her at the 10th level, she has all the feats I've already went through and brew potions. She also has two feats that um, I do not have access to in any way, shape, form, or fashion. As far as I can tell, let me just check again. Right. So she has um, a feat called Airborne, which I assume is for her wings, but... There's no description in the game for it. And then she also has a feat called Desna's Agus, which basically puts little butterflies around her. And anytime that she's in mortal danger, they basically fly her to a different area. Of course, those that feat also is not available in the character creator. So just want to make sure that was noted. For her 11-11 feat, 
you have a couple of options. You could come down here to the bottom and get weapon focus, but it's level 11. By this time, you have a bunch of buffs and ongoing things that will more than make up for that plus one and anything else that you get from choosing weapon focus. So I actually go up here for snapshot. While wielding a ranged weapon, you threaten squares within your melee reach. You can make attacks of opportunity with that ranged weapon. You do not provoke attacks of opportunity when making a ranged attack as an attack of opportunity. And then she also gets quarry. A character can, as a standard action, denote one target within his line of sight as his quarry. He receives a plus two insight bonus on all attack rolls made against his quarry, and all critical threats are automatically confirmed. A character can have no more than one quarry at a time. So at level 12, you can go ahead and pick an ability point for her. Where you want to put it will kind of depend upon how you use her. I don't think she's really all that great as just a pure spellcaster. I don't think she gets enough slots for that. So I prefer to level up dexterity. And then with the charisma and slots that she gets, I just have her put buffs on herself that allow her to do even more damage with the bow. But your mileage may vary. You can build her up how you like. Well, with the skills. Improve snapshot. You threaten an additional five feet with snapshot. And at 13th level, so at third level, a ranger may select a type of terrain. The ranger gains a plus two bonus on initiative checks and lore, nature, perception, and stealth checks when he is in this terrain. Um, I would go with the abyss at level 13. Okay, and for your combat style, improve precise shot. Your ranged attacks ignore anything but total concealment and cover. Your ranged attacks ignore the mischance granted to targets by anything less than total concealment. Total concealment provides their normal benefits against your ranged attacks. All right, and greater snapshot. You threaten an additional five feet with snapshot. Additionally, whenever you make an attack of opportunity using a ranged weapon and hit, you gain a plus two bonus on the damage roll and a plus two bonus on rolls to confirm a critical hit with that attack. These bonuses increase to plus four when you have base attack bonus plus 16 and to plus six when you have base attack bonus plus 20. By, by When you're getting up to these levels, you're going to run a lot more into the enemies that like to run past your front line and get to uh, the back line as quickly as possible. So building her up where she immediately takes advantage when people are creating attacks of opportunities, it's to me, it's to your advantage. For the level 15 favorite enemy, I guess undead, you probably face a lot more of them still. I would still stick with Outsiders. Skills. Improved Invasion. This ability works like Evasion, except that while the character still takes no damage on a successful reflex saving throw against attacks, he henceforth takes only half damage on a failed save. A helpless character does not gain the benefit of Improved Evasion. Skill. And you get another feat. I will go with crit focus. You are trained in the art of causing pain. You receive a plus four circumstance bonus on attack rolls made to confirm critical hits. Okay, so now that we've went through our regular levels, let's look at the mythic path. So your first, I would get distracting shots. Your ranged weapon attacks are dangerous enough for the enemy to forget about melee threats. If you hit an enemy with a ranged weapon attack, they receive a penalty on AC against melee attacks equal to half your mythic rank for one round. And then for your mythic feat, I will go with rapid shot mythic. When using rapid shot, you ignore the feat's negative two penalty on attack rolls. So for her next mythic ability, I'd go ahead and get exposed vulnerability. Every third hit with a ranged weapon against the same enemy deals an additional 1d6 per two mythic ranks divine damage. For her next mythic feat, 
I'd go ahead and just pick up Improved Critical. Your Critical Multiplier with your Chosen Weapon is increased by one. And then for the last Mythic Ability I can show you, I'd say you should go ahead and get the bigger they are. By the time you're about to pick up this, you're going to be facing a lot bigger enemies that love to charge in and give you opportunities to use your bow. And then for your last Mythic Feat, I'd actually go back into Mythic Ability and choose Cleaving Shot. Each time you deal critical damage with your ranged weapon attack or reduce the target to zero hit points, you deal your weapon damage to all other enemies in a 10 foot radius. Okay, so now that we've went through the levels of the Mythic Path, let's take a minute to look, check out our spell book. As you can see, even getting up to level 17, she's only at level four in her spell book. So she doesn't get the most powerful spells available. But at level one, she has access to Hurricane Bow. Any arrow fired from a bow or crossbow you are carrying when the spell is cast deals damage as if one size larger than it actually is. That's really nice. If you have uh, pets that you're going with, Magic Fang is also good. Magic Fang gives all natural weapons or unarmed strikes of the subject a plus one enhancement bonus on attack and damage rolls. Aspect of the Falcon is really good for it too. You gain a plus three competence bonus on perception checks a plus one competence bonus on ranged attacks, and the critical multiplier for your bows and crossbows is increased as well. Really good stuff. For level two, Cat's Grace is, is great. It has a plus four enhancement bonus to dexterity. Since Vitals, this spell makes your eyes shine blood red. Um, you're able to deal an additional 1d6 points of damage. This additional damage increases by 1d6 for every three caster levels you possess beyond the third. So this is definitely a mainstay in your arsenal. Also, Bark Skin. Bark Skin toughens a creature's skin. The effect grants a plus two enhancement bonus to the creature's existing natural armor bonus. This enhancement bonus increases by one for every three caster levels above third to a maximum of plus five at 12th level. She should need this and she'll be all the way in the back, but it's still nice to be able to put on your pets or anybody else in the party who's going to be closer up front and perhaps not wearing armor. At level three, the lay poison is great, but it should be covered by your clerics. Same with resist energy and protection from energy. But if you like, you could put it on her as well. Instant enemy is nice. With this spell, you designate the target as your favored enemy for the remainder of its duration. For the duration of the spell, you treat the target as if it were a favorite enemy for all purposes. And Magic Fang Greater. Greater Magic Fang gives all natural weapons or unarmed strikes of the subject a plus one enhancement bonus on attack and damage rolls per forecastic levels per four caster levels up to a maximum of plus five. So definitely very, very nice. Uh, for the step mass, for the duration of this spell, the subject ignores the adverse movement effects of difficult terrain. I've never had to use this before. Every time a difficult terrain spell was put down, it was always cast by me or someone in my party, but that may not be true in the beta. So it's good that she at least has the ability to throw this on if need be. And then at level four, freedom of movement was really, really nice in Kingmaker. It was pretty much a requirement. And Wrath of the Righteous, I've almost never had to use it, but it's nice that she has it. Aspect of the Wolf gives you a plus four enhancement bonus to strength and dexterity. Very nice. Animal growth. The target of animal grows to twice its normal size and eight times its normal weight. The alteration changes the animal size category to the next largest, grants it a plus eight size bonus to strength and a plus four size bonus to constitution while giving you a negative two size penalty to dexterity. So again, if you're traveling with pets, this is great to put on it. And if for some reason you're in a fight where Arishel is just getting hit a lot and can't really avoid it, Shield of Dawn deals 1d6 points of fire damage plus one point per caster level up to five. So it's a nice way to deal some damage back to them. So as you can see, she's got some really, really nice spells available, but not a lot of slots to be able to use them. You could go into the mythic abilities and choose the ones that are going to increase the amount of slots that she has. But honestly, I think it'd be a waste. Uh, she's much better as someone who focuses on using the bow and buffing herself so that she could do the maximum amount of damage that she can. 
or at least that's worked out very well for me when I had her at my party. But let me know down in the comments, what do you think? Would you go with this build for our shell as well? Or do you think there's a better way to build her up? Let me know. Leave me a like if you enjoyed this build and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video later on this week. Take care.